Singapore Island Country Club's Island Course. It's also known as the Old Course. Uh, we're going to miss this course, or at least for me. I have tons of great memories playing here as a junior golfer. Won a couple of uh, junior events here as well. I would say this course was actually the golf course for the juniors. Uh, thank you for the memories. This course used to be long actually for the younger kids, especially like me when we started around 13, 14. I started golf pretty late. But right now, it's not that long as we've grown older. I'm going to walk you through how we actually play this course. The first hole is actually a very nervous one as we've got hazard on the left and trees on the right. You do want to place your ball right in the middle of the fairway. So then, you know, long hitters would use a driver and try to attack the pin. Hole 2 is the same as well. It's a short hole. Um, the blue tees are actually on the left side, left of the green. Unfortunately, when we played this, the tee box were on the right side, which is the ladies' tee box. It's 258 meters. The pin was on the right, so I went to the left of the green as I'm playing to the fat side of the green. Uh, chipped this pretty well. Unfortunately, it just rolled out a bit too much. Green was firm. And from this awkward spot, we call this the short side. Putting would be the best choice. As uh, some of you know, I would always choose putting off the green over a chip, if I can. Hole 3, par 5 at 509, this will be reachable for me in 2. The best spot you want the ball to be would be right of the fairway. You never want the ball to go left as everything kicks from right to left. Um, I know saying all this wouldn't make a point, uh, wouldn't be valuable anymore as the cost is gone. You won't be able to play on this course anymore. Except maybe for, I think the SICC members, they can still play 9 holes on the course. Uh, this third hole has probably the best view in the country. I call this the multi-million dollar view. You have the view of the reservoir. My third shot, I'm playing from the bunker. It's a very awkward 40 meter bunker shot. Thin it slightly, but on the good thing, it's right at the back of the green, which means I still get the putt and I just need great speed. This will go from right to left and let it trickle down. The greens here can get really, really fast. You know, they can cut it really short and they can roll it, double roll it, maybe even triple press it. Isn't the view beautiful? Hole 4, par 5, this goes uphill. Now, if it, it says it's 457, but it does play like a 500 one, as we've got a really severe upslope on the second shot. I struck this well. The ball landed center and the slope kick to the left. I've got a uphill line, ball above feet. Now, to hit this shot, I generally like to narrow my stance, put the ball just left heel and then swing nice and smooth. The ball ended up at a bunker and you know I always favour missing on the fat side which is the side where you have a lot of green to work with. Remember to always rake the bunkers my friends, it's important. So just a big right to left part, two part for par. Hole 5 is a downhill par 3. We've got the pin right in front on the right side. So basically, the right bunker is in play. Uh, if you play this too long, it might overshoot the green, which, isn't, which it isn't very good. So I went to the pitching wedge, subconsciously sort of drew it back, and the ball landed safely onto the green. I'm a big fan of fixing pitch marks, as I believe if you fix more than one, you actually store a birdie in your birdie bank. Will this be true? There we go. Fix the pig smart, you get a birdie. 
Okay, hole six is an index one par four. You never want to be left, center or right would be perfect. I'm aiming for the tree on the right and let it draw back. I didn't draw back, just to hit it straight, so I think this will be fine. And somehow my ball ended up on the other fairway. I think it kicked something or it hit a tree or a branch. From here I went with a 5 iron at 185 meters. The pin was at the back and I do not want the ball to overshoot the green as that will spell calamity. And from here again, a fat side, chip and run. Struck this just a bit too much. The ball missed the break and then it went to the back of the green. Now what's really interesting about the greens here is that you can't really tell if the green does have a big break. Visually, it doesn't look much, but when you do putt it, it breaks quite a bit. Hole 7 is a par 4. I like this tee box. I like the look of it as there's this overhanging tree and it's sort of a, like a tree line uh, tee off. Wanted to place the ball on the right side of the fairway, but the ball had other plans. We had to drive really quick over here, set up the camera, rush to the hole, quickly hit a 5 iron, and hopefully I hit it well, and get the ball up towards the green. This went well. Ball just missed the tree slightly and great teamwork from my friend there filling up the divots. Running back to get the camera and then we're on to the next shot. This is going to break right to left. I went with a sand wedge with a slight shaft lean. Just skipping one up there as close as possible. And I would say a semi tap in with my sand wedge. This is something that I do quite often. Uh, I do practice putting with my sand wedge. <laughs> Hole 8 par 4, dog leg right to left again. As you can tell, this course actually favours drawers because everything moves from right to left. When the ball lands on the fairway, it's going to kick severely and if you hit it low enough, the ball does run quite a bit. Pretty happy with the result. And now I'm left with 63 meters. This green is one of the trickiest greens in the entire course. So even though this pin is red, sometimes when you land the ball short of the pin, the ball can trickle off the green. So actually, I'm kind of happy where my ball is. Now, if you were to pay attention to my friend on the other end, you just watch how his ball leaves the green gently, slowly, and then bye-bye. So there is a spot where you want to leave your ball at, nothing short of that. After watching what my friend's ball did, learn a bit of where I need to place the ball and just a casual tap in for par. Hole 9 and 18 are the finishing holes of each 9 and both of them are par 3s. Both par threes are not easy, as the greens are small and you require full carry. The pin is in the middle, you do not want the ball to be over. My ball ended up in a spot where I just felt like I was, I was putting for only 5 feet. And watch how the ball trickles and glides towards the pin. If I were to hit this any much harder, it's going to be rolling off the green. So a two-part par, perfect, excellent on this hole. Hole 10, par 4. Again, you want to place the ball center or right of the fairway. So here I'm going for the far right and the plan is to draw it back. The ball stayed straight. Not sure why the ball isn't listening today. But still, it's okay. Ball's on the right side. I just have an overhanging branch in front of me. So I have to keep this low. The front of this green is firm, so when it lands shot, it will have a very hard bounce. And watch the ball go towards the middle of the green. 
I think putting the ball in the middle of the green, it's much better than playing it cute, just nice. As if the ball do come up short, then it's going to be a very difficult save for par. Hole 11, par 5. I remember when I was young, this used to be a very strong par 5. We needed a very good driver and a very good 3 wood to put the ball onto the green. Here, for the first time in my life, I'm actually going far left. And I must say, it's not a good spot. As I'm being blocked by the tree as well. Had to punch this 6 iron way below the branches. And the ball came up short just on the slope. It's still okay. Balls on the uphill, I went with a 54 degrees, a sand wedge instead of a lob wedge. As any club that you use on the uphill line will always have more loft. And a very nice present, a birdie on hole 11. Hole 12 is a short par 4. I think for most long hitters, it's drivable. For me, I just want to get it up there as close as possible. My plan is to go up to the left side of the ferry as that's the flat part of this hole. And this green on this hole is tricky as well. The pin is on the back right. I plan to land it in the middle and let it slide towards the right. But somehow it kicks towards the left. It just can't figure out the green. And this will be a double breaker. So the wind is picking up now. With hole 13, we've got uh, the building. Uh, during then, 20 over years ago, there wasn't any buildings. It was just clear sky. So now we use it as a landmark as to point out where we need to aim and aim and start the ball. From here, it's 120 meters to the pin. The pin is on the right side of the fairway. And this is a very comfortable distance for my pitching wedge. It went straight for the pin. The last time I filmed Island Course was with Ryan. Ryan is a national amateur from the Singapore team. Um, I'll leave the link for the video on the top right. Uh, if you do want to see how he plays and the layout of the course, it's all there. Now, hole 14 was a very strong par 4 back then for me as a child. Now, it's still a very strong par 4. We need to have the ball on the center or right of the fairway. You either carry over the bunkers or let the ball roll in between them. And from here, it's a 7 iron from 158 meters with the pin tucked on the right. Here, I was trying to go for a fade. It's a shot that I rarely hit, I rarely practice, and I rarely pull it off. Not sure why I'm doing it this time. So the ball ended up in the bunker. Managed to get the ball up close to the pin. And a very, 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 very tricky right to left putt. And quick as well. The finishing holes in Island Cause are probably one of the best in the country. We've got a very tough par 4, which we just played. A long par 3, where both three lines uh, are in play. I duffed this, and the ball just landed short of the bunker. Took a very nice lucky hop over the bunker and then it landed on the green. And then from here, just good pace and two parts. And the next three holes are excellent as well. We've got a par 5, a par 4 and a superbly strong par 3 to end our round. Hole 16, you want to place the ball center um, through my eyes. This looks like a high fade. I just feel that I'm able to put the ball in play. The ball went a bit too long on the left side and now I have to hit a very low punch draw with a 4 iron. The pin is stuck just behind the bunker on the left side. So with 60 meters, I plan to hoist the ball up really high up. Uh, had a bit of cut in it, which was kind of good. It landed up short away from the bunker. And then from here, I part with the sand wedge only because 
my friend forgot to bring the putter. But I'm, it's still my fault for not bringing my own club. So two parts, par. Hole 17. This hole left me very good memories and also not so good ones. But still, the memory is always enjoyable for me to look back. Um, I won a tournament uh, playing well in the whole 17. And the subsequent year where I was defending my title, I shanked my second shot with a 9-iron on this hole as well with one stroke lead on the final day. So basically, this hole made it and broke it for me. Ah, hole 18. A very strong par 3. 177 meters all the way uphill. I went with a 5 iron. And I thought this distance was perfect and I struck this really well. And the ball just came up slightly short of the green and it rolled back. Unfortunately, it did not hop up. But also fortunately, it did not roll all the way down to the valley. I want to thank Island Course, this course, for all the great memories it has given me. Um, have you guys played on this course before? Uh, what do you remember doing the old days when you were growing up playing on this course? Please share it with me down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I look forward to see you guys in the next video. May the course be with you. Bye-bye.